Good morning, good morning, good morning. So we are going to be talking from Hebrews, the 12th chapter today. So we're going to get started with the prayer. We're joining with Erica, and then we're going to see where God leads us, okay? Well, thank you for today. Thank you for allowing us to see another day to dive into your word, God. Yesterday's word was wonderful, but today, God, you have a word fresh for today so that we can dive into and learn more and develop more as a Christian that you will want to see, God. So God, the crease of Erica, so that you will continue to be uplifted and get the glory, God. Whatever the listeners here today, make sure that they have an understanding and an open heart of wisdom, an open heart of understanding, an open heart of acceptance of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Excuse me. Okay, so first, as always, I am going to read um, the verse that we are focused on today, and then I will go back and forth um, in the scriptures to see exactly why is this scripture so um, for today, what's the before and after. So the first verse, well, the 11th verse, well, the 11th verse today, <clears throat> and it says, no discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. Mm. It is painful, but afterwards there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. So let me go to the whole entire chapter. So the name of this section is God's Discipline Proves His Love. Um, from what I've read so far, <clears throat> think about, and I think it actually says in one verse, think about a time or, you know, if you have children, or yourself as a child, um, or as an employee, when we did something that wasn't a part of the plan, a part of the, the routine, a part of the day-to-day -day things that we're supposed to do, were we corrected? How did it feel? As a teacher, I was criticized how you talk how you talk to your kids, you know, either from the parents or from my employer's um, perspective or the state board perspective, you know, you're supposed to do it this way. So, you know, you're criticized on how you perform, you know? So it's the same thing as what God is doing. He is somewhat criticizing how we live our life. Okay. However, God wants us to know overall of all things in this chapter, he wants us to know, just like the chapter says, God's discipline proves his love. If God didn't correct us, then he probably didn't care about us. That's all I'm saying. Just think about your parents. If your parents, <clears throat> if your parents saw that you were doing the potato salad, wrong <laughs> and it came out wrong every single time the way that you made it and your parents said hey how about use more sugar or less sugar more salt less salt put a little bit of pepper no pepper you know however they wanted you to you know and sometimes it feels like oh well, was that a dig are you criticizing how i make my potatoes that way and your parents are like, no, we're just trying to make sure that it's enjoyable for everybody else. And this way, I love you just that much that I don't want anybody to talk about you. So God is saying, I love you just that much because guess what? I, I don't want these people to say, oh, that's that's God's child and God's child is doing it this way. No, that, that's not his will. That's not his, his alignment of his word and his will. He wants us to make sure that we are living according to the word. So if we're not showing love, then God's going to say, hey, you're, you, here's a conviction. Be convicted in your heart that you didn't show love like you were supposed to show love. You know, so the correction is supposed to make us better. Do it feel good at that point? No. But if we continue to abide by his word and his will, later on in our life, we'll realize, oh, that was why I was supposed to show that compassion to that person because that person down the line blessed me. You know, God has a way of lining stuff up that we can't see. We can't see the whole story. But God sees the whole story from chapter to chapter, chapter one, bless chapter four. You know, we, we, we don't see the whole chapters. We don't see the whole book. So the scriptures are just that, and I just did a whole overview. So let's dive into a little scriptures that pretty much speaks that. So um, 
All right, so let's see. That's where I'm going to work. All right, let us run with our endurance the race God has set before us. Mm. The race is not given to the the ease to the ones that will. What's the scripture? Oh my God, I'm forgetting. The race is not given to the one. Pretty much who can finish it quickly, but the ones that are going to endure it. You know, I feel like when you're driving down the road and you're driving fast, you can't. You can't see, you can't see the beauty all around you. But if you take your time and just outline every single thing that you see in your path, you'll notice a lot more that you miss when you were going too fast. That, I think that's how the scripture speaks to me with that. So he said, um, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiated and perfected our faith. Amen. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding his shame. <clears throat> Now he sits in the place of honor beside God's throne. Um, after all, you have not yet given uh, your lives and struggle against sin. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you and his children? He, this is what Jesus God said to us. My child, don't make the light of the Lord's discipline. And don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves. And he punishes each one he accepts as his child. You know, God wants us to live right. All right, we're not perfect, but if we continue to do the same mistakes, we're not going to even reach perfection. <laughs> I mean, I know that we won't ever reach perfection. We won't be perfect, but that's the whole point of repenting every day. But at the same time, if we continue to do the same stuff over and over and we're not repenting, even thinking about repenting, then we won't see God in the end because we are living a sinful life that we are not heeding, um, heeding to his instructions, okay? As you endure this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who was never disciplined by his father? If God doesn't discipline you he does, he, as he does all his children, it means that you are Ill illegitimate and are not really his children at all. You won't belong to God if God don't discipline you. If he don't correct you, you don't belong to him. All right? <laughs> That's plain and simple. You're not his if you don't get the correction. So when God's silent to you and he's not even silent for years and not trying to tell you how to correct your mistakes, then you need to think about that. Have God spoken to you lately? That's the question. Since we respected our earthly fathers who discipline us, shouldn't we submit even more to a discipline of the father of our spirits and live forever? For our earthly father disciplined us for a few years, doing the best they knew how. But God discipline is always good for us, so that we might share in His holiness. No discipline, enjoyable while it's happening, is painful. But afterwards, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in that way. And that last verse is, but afterwards there will be a peace. This is our verse. There will be a peaceful harvest who are trained in that way. You know, when you go through to a new job, you get trained. When you make a mistake, they correct you. When you make a mistake, they correct you. They tell you how your performance is. Oh, you did a great job the first day. Oh, you did a great job. It's your first week. Okay, 90 days later. All right, we're going to promote you because we saw that you have been exceptional at this job. You have been trained that way. But you've been trained based on they, not necessarily punishing you, but they have been correcting you on your mistakes that you've made. So when you get to the 90 days, you are not necessarily perfected with the, the, with the craft, but you have overcome the obstacles of different mistakes that you have made. So you're not making as many mistakes, but you are to a point where they can take their hands off a little bit and say, hey, you know what you're doing a little bit right now. But you've been trained that way. We are trained by reading the gospel. When we make mistakes and we're not doing as the gospel has told uh, has allowed us to know what to do and how to live, God corrects us. He convicts us. We fix it. We're supposed to be better. So we continue to do things. We may make a different mistake. God trains us, convicts us. So we're trained to pretty much know that two years ago when I made that horrible mistake of doing that, God corrected me, God punished me. But now this year, two years later, I'm able to say, okay, I know not to do that anymore. So I'm going to continue to live 
according to how God wants me to. But I'm not going to be perfect. I'm going to make another mistake. God's going to correct me. But we are trained to know what we should be living. The ones that are trained this way, meaning I get corrected, I fix it. I move on. If you don't correct yourself after God has already given you that, that time to say, hey, you need to fix this, then we're not trained in his way. We're actually dodging and avoiding his way. So they're not, there will not be a peaceful harvest. And I'm thinking the peaceful harvest, the harvest comes when you are finished with the planting. When God is finished with the planting, I, I know there's a verse somewhere in the gospel where um, the farmer um, someone in the farmer um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the farm said, hey, should I take the weeds from the good crop? Because it seemed like the bad crop, the bad weeds are actually covering and, and making a bad harvest to the good crop. And the farmer said, no, we're going to wait until the end. And that scripture, I got to go find it. Oh, my God. That scripture is pretty much, pretty much say when the weeds are coming up, you don't want the weeds. When you pull the weeds up, the weeds can destroy the good crop. So he said, no, we will actually divide the weed from the good crop at the end of the harvest. That just symbolizes there are going to be some weeds, you know, but he's training us to be stronger than those weeds. All right. And the weeds are the evil people, the evil spirits. We are being trained to to conquer and to battle um, and to get through while the weeds are still around us. But he, he's causing us to go back to his word and continue to get that correction so that that we don't do what it did before. All right. And, you know, Satan, Satan's Satan just saying, okay, he's going to use a different weed or he's going to use the same weed to dress it up a little bit. But thing is, we're conquering those weeds. So when the harvest come, that is when glory, when Jesus comes back and he comes to get us, then yes, he will divide the weed from the good crop. I want to be on the good crop side. All right. So that peaceful harvest simply means I ain't got to worry about God looking at my whole entire role and saying, oh, Erica, you didn't do this, you didn't do this, dude. it ain't going to be peaceful. <laughs> it ain't going to be peaceful. But I wanted to be peaceful where God said, oh, Erica, my good servant, you have done a great job. Come on in to the house of the Lord and I'm going to be great. <laughs> I'm going to be able to be so happy because it's going to be a peaceful exchange. I exchange my flesh with you, God, and I put my spirit where you are. All right. I want that peaceful harvest, that peaceful exchange. And let's exchange. My spirit go with you and my flesh stays here. Let, let, let's, let's just do that exchange and keep it moving. But it's going to be peaceful. That's what peaceful harvest means to me. That's my interpretation. All right. <clears throat> And the last two verses says, um, the 12th verse. So take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. Mm. Take a new grip with your tired hands. Meaning, wait, you have done all you can. Rely on God. Take a new grip. Take a new perspective. Take a new approach. See if you, you've been grabbing at that thing for so long, but in a different perspective. You're tired. Maybe you put your hands in God's hands and you can take a new grip. And then you can strengthen your weak knees. You can stand up. You know, you know how sometimes you stand and, you know, it's your back start hurting. But then when you... Take that foot and you do something to it and it's like you stand with a different posture and it, it relieves some of that pressure off that back. You know, that that's how I'm seeing it. You know, stand different a little bit. You know, maybe lean more on God and we will see if our weakness, our tiredness doesn't change. And it says, mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak 
and laying will not fall, but become strong. <sighs> God has given us a path. And I read on Facebook this morning um, that we constantly compare ourselves to other people. And we do. We constantly, oh, they got this, they got that, why, why not? Why this is now I'm in the same perspective, same boat as they are, you know, stuff like that. We, we constantly compare ourselves. And God said, you know, sometimes, you know, that's good, sometimes that's bad, depending on what's your response to it. But he said, sometimes you gotta look, change the perspective. Sometimes, when you think about it, if you constantly compare yourself to other people, there are times that somebody is comparing themselves to you. So someone's looking at you. And if you change that path, you repent from conviction, you stand on a different leg, you do something differently that you continue to be with God, maybe someone sees that in you and they realize they're not as weak as they think they are because they're looking at you and they see that you are still trying Jesus and that's a blessing because you compare yourself to other people but if you feel like you are okay in where you are in your response to comparing to other people and you feel like you're okay then guess what somebody else might say hmm, they feel like they're okay I want to be more like them because I want to be okay too God doesn't ask, he asks for perfection, but I feel like God doesn't ask for us to be perfected. Um, he just asks that we just try, we repent, we come back to him, we stay in his word, and we do what we can do. And when it comes down to we did our best, I think God would be happy with that. Because we're still trying to perfect us and not perfect others. As long as we are trying to perfect us, which is our best in, in living the word of God, diving into the word of God, realizing that God punishes and corrects us for a reason because he actually loves us and he wants us to be with him one day. And that's a blessing. That is a blessing. So I pray that you got this word today because this word was actually pretty good for today. So um, think about it all today, about corrections, and see where God wants to take you today. Lord, thank you for this word. Thank you for allowing us to understand that you are a great God and you are still loving us for our mistakes. You're still loving us for the mistakes in the, in the past that we got off on that we shouldn't have gone. But God, you are still just being our shepherd. You are still just allowing us to hear your voice, God, for you to direct us and correct us and instruct us where we need to go, God, because God uses as you want us to, God. You know, we are just really just waiting on your command your path that is laid out for us for us to walk and god if we if we don't have everything that is according to your 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 plan lord we ask that you direct us to understand what can we do better how can we live better how can we walk how can we pray how can we do whatever we need to do god to get back on one accord with you lord please god just direct and just let us understand that you are in control, God, and you're able to just point out what we need to change, that we need to do better at, God, because, God, one day we want to have a peaceful harvest with you. We want to meet you on that other side, God, that it's just peaceful, no sorrow, no death, no no, no lies, um, no evil. It's just all good, and, Lord, I want to be there for you to say, good and faithful servant you are welcome into this place and lord i want to hear those words so god continue to correct us continue to direct us continue to instruct us continue to mold us and shape us into who you want us to be god and so god whatever is not like you within us god we ask for change right now we ask for us to be molded and shaped and changed right now to be more like you god and lord we say thank you for that thank you for the correction Thank you for the guidance. Thank you for your love. A love that is just so powerful. 
the power of love to change us, to mold us, to be more and more like you. So Lord, we say, give us this day our daily bread. And we continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, people, have a great and wonderful day.